Hello, it's Carly Howard with Raptor H Realty. This week I have for our Mansfield Spotlight, this is Jessica Gandy. So she is going, we're just gonna ask her a few questions just about protocols. So let's just start with Jessica. How long have you been in the business as a nurse? Um, I have been a nurse uh, for 15 years and I have solely done ER and uh, love it, wouldn't do anything different. So it's, uh, just it's busy it's different it's changing so i like it i like what it offers okay so tell us when how has the er been since COVID has hit are y'all seeing a lot of patients there are they being directed a different way or to a different area now we kind of had a of uh, the best of both worlds in a sense kind of when COVID started and the initial lockdown began, our patient census dropped quite dramatically. And that was a pretty common theme across the board with every hospital in the Metroplex. Uh, so we went from seeing our normal nearly 400 patients a day down to the high 100s, 180s, which that's unreal. So that was um, something all of us were kind of looking around at one another, asking ourselves, is this the calm before the storm? And we were watching what was happening in New York and we kind of knew, okay, well, this is probably headed our way. So there were lots of preparedness, lots of meetings, lots of education, lots of training that was occurring while our patient census was low. Um, there were lots of nurses that did get furloughed, that got laid off. Um, luckily none of our core group had that occur so it is now getting back up to our normal numbers and what we see on a regular day-to-day -day basis however the majority of them are COVID symptom related which is kind of hard now to differentiate since the symptom list keeps growing exponentially and has everything added to it right so are y'all administering the tests there for COVID? So the guidelines are set by the uh, Tarrant County Health Department on who qualifies for a test and who does not via the emergency room. So um, lots of people think, oh, I can go to the emergency room and be tested. And that's not the case uh, there are testing facilities throughout the Metroplex that offer the drive up testing doctor's offices. But as far as the ER standpoint goes, we're set to a pretty strict um, guideline of who we can and cannot test. So they have to meet a certain criteria of things before they'll be tested through the ER. If you're being admitted, that's a different story. Um, but just coming into the ER for COVID-like symptoms unless you meet this certain criteria set by the health department, we're not testing. Okay. And so how are our hospitals holding up right now with, as we can see, the numbers are increasing. How is your hospital holding up? Uh, we're busy. We are, we are full. Um, our staff is starting to kind of bear the brunt of just wearing down because there is no calm anymore. It's, very busy from the time that the shift starts until it ends. So okay. it's, it's becoming a, a bit brutal. Okay. So as far as, well, now we're in a time where we're mandated to wear a mask. So I thought it'd be good for you to kind of teach us how to wear a mask, to put it on, take it off, especially now that kids are going to be having to wear them in schools, according to the right. state of Texas. <laughs> How can we protect our, you know, and I think it's great, um, you know, mixed emotions. I don't know how well my boys are going to yeah. be wearing a mask all day long, but I do think yep. it will definitely help with those germs, um, but kind of teach us how we put it on, take it off, um, you know, sure. you be washing those masks probably every day or disinfecting them somehow. Yes. <laughs> yep. So the, um, the mask that the majority of the population is uh, wearing are the fabric type mask, which those definitely do need to be washed um, daily. If you know you do get some, kind of get an extra stash so you have things to change out. But washing and 
drying them daily is super important. Um, and obviously if you get it really soiled, if you have a cold runny nose and you're sneezing, that would also warrant changing the mask because if it gets even oh, no. remotely <laughs> saturated, it doesn't work very well. So yeah. anything is better than nothing. CDC has given lots of recommendations out as far as what works and as a barrier of any kind is going to be better than nothing at all at this point because it is a particulate virus that can travel mostly by you know transmission of sneezing coughing but there's still lots of things out on how it's transmitted so that's the the thing that we've had to keep an open mind with data keeps changing it's still a new virus we're learning about it so it kind of just falls underneath the category of just practicing good common sense and that goes along with mask wearing yes so um we just can you demonstrate did you bring a mask i do i actually okay. brought a mask so okay, perfect <laughs> so i have our standard issue super fancy hospital mask that we get issued that we wear on the floor um, for just our general day-to-day -day stuff. Um, now, if we are doing specialized procedures, we have different masks that we wear that we're actually um, fit tested for. So those are our specialty masks that we save for procedures, but just this general one is just your standard hospital surgical mask. So it's, most of them will have a ridge up at the top. And so that's what molds around your nose to get a good fit to your face and it has your fancy ear loops. So the thing, once you are putting on a clean mask, you just obviously wanna wash your hands before you handle it. And then, so you put the mask on, it loops around your ears and you pull it down on your chin and then you gently press around your nose to get a good seal up here. And then you've got your mask on. So the most important thing I noticed with people out in public with wearing a mask is it's down here that doesn't help you. So a virus can travel in through your nose, your mouth. And so having this all exposed doesn't help you any. So having it stay here. Another common thing I see people out in general settings, they just will pull down and pull up and pull down and pull up. So the whole point of the mask is it collects whatever is floating around on the outside of the surface. So say you go through the store and you happen to walk by somebody that sneezes or coughs, you've got a mask on, so those little bitty particles are stuck here. So as soon as you do this, you've disturbed it right here in front of your ports of entry. So once you wear your mask, it stays on until you take it off. And the way that you take it off to prevent disrupting is you get the loops and you kind of pull it wide and you pull it away from your face. Okay. And then you wash your hands. Yes. My husband and I are, are see people all the time moving them up and down and you know, yep. and it's contaminating everything. You touch your phone, your keys, it's, everything. Cross contamination is a legit thing and something that as nurses we have that drilled in our brains from day one of nursing school. But general population, that's not something that you think about. So wearing the surgical gloves while you go to the store i personally don't agree with it because like you said it's you're touching the shopping cart and then you have the gloves on and so then you touch all of the products that you're buying and those go in your buggy and you're like oh i can't remember what was on my list or i need to text someone to be like do we have milk or bread so then you pick up your phone and then now your phone is contaminated and then you walk out so that you touch your credit card Mm -hmm. and you put your credit card back in your purse that's contaminated now and walk out to your car you touch your keys so it's just hand sanitizing multiple times throughout the store would be better suited than just wearing the gloves unless you legitimately just touch your cart mm -hmm. and that's it okay. so all right well thank you so much for taking the time to kind of walk us through that i really appreciate it and if y'all have any questions, y'all can reach out to me and I can ask Jessica for y'all. Um, thank you for taking the time and we will talk to y'all soon. Thanks. Bye.